Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We got another fun, simple little uh, Christmas carving video for you today. This video actually started out, I was going to make cookie cutter Christmas carvings. That's a catchy title, isn't it? Cookie cutter Christmas carvings. But uh, as I went on, I realized that uh, nobody should own as many cookie cutters as my wife does. <laughs> so that's not fair. And the truth of the matter is, once you trace your cookie cutter, it's just clip art. So I ventured over to the, the Googles <laughs> and I cut out some clip art. So if you search stocking clip art or mitten clip art, you should be good to go. So forget the, the cookie cutters, that's just extra for nothing. Now, once I have a pattern and I size it the way that I want, I should make a video on sizing patterns sometime, but regardless, once I do that, I like to, uh, if I think I'm ever going to make them again, I have an old sign that I've been cutting up for years and just making these little plastic patterns that I can trace on my wood or just use thin, thinner wood. But, uh, yeah, I just trace them on and, uh, just cut them out. If you have a coping saw, you're good. If you want to uh, mass produce them, you can uh, trace them on your block and then just cut them out in strips after you cut out the shape. So what I'm gonna do is uh, go cut out two of these. And like I said, I'm gonna cut the shape out. If you don't have a bandsaw, I like half inch, five eighths. I mean, if you only have three quarters, use three quarters. But uh, you can easily cut out a half inch with a uh, little coping saw. So let's get these cut out and uh, Get cracking. That was easy, wasn't it? I like the idea of doing the thick stuff and then just cutting out a whole whack of them. So anyway, let's start with the, uh, the mitten here. Now, as you know, all these saw cuts have to be removed. So you can take your knife and cut all the, uh, the faces off all the, uh, all the saw marks, but I have another idea. I have this, uh, little cheater board. See, it's just a little, a little lip on here the board and a little backstop. I like to put that on my desk here and put my little mitten on here. I've said this a million times, but if I carve something, I want it to look carved and a mitten especially, what is this? This number five OCC tool. But if you got any kind of a little gouge or something, I like to do this. Let's just really make it look like a carved mitten, all right? It's easy. It gives you a nice backstop to work against. All right. And doesn't that look better? Having all those facets on there carved makes it nice for dry brushing too. All right. spot there. Look at that. Nice and uh, nice and faceted. I love the faceted look. But while I got this out here, I'm going to do the stocking too. Oh, something else too. I should have mentioned. If you wanted to even thin, thin the fingers down, you wanted to shape that mitten you can shape it but I'm not gonna worry too much about it all right back to where we were uh, onto the uh, the sides here we got to cut all that again same thing got to cut all those saw marks off of there but while I'm doing that a big shout out to uh, all the people who sent me messages and comments about that uh, flickering light last in the last video, uh, 
solved it easy peasy. I was filming for the nerds. I was filming on 24 frames per second. And I guess that is a, uh, doesn't work with LED lighting, but just by bumping it up to 30 made all the difference. So thanks guys. You're lifesavers. I thought I was going to have to rip out that light. I'm just working my way around and uh, cutting off all the saw marks. This is no different than anything else. When the grain is pulling and cutting one way or the other, you got to switch it around so that you can get the, uh, the right way without taking chips off. Got to do the bottom. All right. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but it is turbulent rain out this morning. Very high wind warnings. I'm supposed to be in the bush cutting wood, but uh, that's not happening this morning. So I got my mitten. I got no saw marks left. Got a little bit of pencil or marker on here, which is fine. So now I'm just going to go around. I'm going to uh, take the corners off. You have to be able to hear that wind. That's wild. Hopefully I can keep my hydro, keep my hydro on, or as the Americans would say, the power. <laughs> I always get in trouble every time I say hydro. It's a Canadian thing, I guess. Working my way around, taking off all the corners. Now, when we get to this little uh, mitten here, the thumb, I guess you should say. I'm going to put a big V cut really to highlight that thumb area. Yeah. Now I can continue. Fun, easy little carves. Really, after you've carved it, the, the fun is in the painting or what you do with it after, right? Big long V cut. There again. I was uh, a little bit uh, distracted this fall. I didn't get all my wood out of the bush yet, so. That's what I've been doing in what little spare time that I have to keep the wood stove going. All right, that's looking like a nice mitten. And then look it over. If you see something wonky that you don't like, just trim it off. Facets are your friend. All right, there you go. We grab a pencil here. Let's make a little little cuff on here. Let me grab my examples over here. I got one, one plain, one ribbed, and one textured. All right. So, if you want to. Uh, well, we'll cut this first. And you can make this any size you want. I threw one out that looks silly because uh, I went a little bit too high and it, it just looked goofy. So I keep it down to about three eighths, quarter inch. But just doing a two sided V cut here. You can see that. If you have a V-tool, of course, you can just run your V-tool around it real quick like a bunny, but... Alright, see that? So if we want to make that a little bit bolder, we can take the, the meat off the mitten itself here and have that cup, cup, cuff stick out a little more. Like I said, those are my, my sample pieces. So uh, I learn 
I learn as I go, and as I go, the more ideas that come to me, and you'll be no different. You'll say, oh, I should have painted it like that. So you just make another one. They're so easy that you just keep on making them. Another thing about being in the bush cutting firewood, these crazy high winds, there's still some dead standing ash that uh, every once in a while you hear a big, big one fall over. So don't need to be in the bush in the morning. I could leave this just as is. All right. I can write my name, name on it. I can do lots of things, but I guess let's make this one ribbed, and then we'll sculpt the uh, we'll sculpt the uh, stocking, the one with the little gouge. But yeah, let's make a little. Little V cuts. Like that. Then we can go around the whole thing, but really, that's it. These ones here, I painted snowflakes on this one. I painted, uh, I don't know, beige and green dots on an orange mitten. <laughs> this one here, I tried to do a little bit of plaid and then dry brushed it with white. But, yeah, let's do the stocking and then I'll show you how I, uh, how I hang them. It's nice to get, uh, when you are painting though, if you can get a little bit extra, extra shadow in those thumbs, that would work good. Let me show you this wind here. This is wild. Okay, let's get back to carving. Let's put our, our mitten here. Take our little sculpted one here. And uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, do this again. Let's, uh, you just watch me. You just watch me go around this before on the mitten. So maybe. How about I just run around with my knife and I'm going to cut all the saw marks off the outside. Now, same thing. I'm going to run around and I'm just going to cut all the corners off. And like I said, remember, every time you change direction, you may have to change the direction of your knife. With the pulling. If you're going the wrong way, you start pulling the wood up and it starts to to splinter on you, just turn your knife around and go the other way. Right. I'm going to be shocked if we don't lose power. It's not constant, it's just gusting. Right. But the snow is gone. So if I go down there and pull that, it's going to tear. So I'm going to go this way. Right. I should mention both of these, the grain is running vertical, right? It's not cross grain. separate the uh, what do you call it the, <laughs> I'm gonna say the fur the cuff 
fringe, cuff, whatever. I'm just using my knife. And again, if you got a V-tool and you want to use it, just run your V-tool across and you're done. goes without saying, especially for the newbies, that if you have a carving glove, you should be wearing it. Do as I say, not as I do. Alright, All right, let's look at that. Not so bad. I'm going to take a number nine just to mix it up here. Number nine gouge, that's a 10 mil. And I'm just going to go in the little short spurts. That's pretty uniform on the back side. If you want to, uh, let me show you. If I do like so, and I really want to mix it up, I'll just kind of go in the, start in the middle of this one. And then have like uh, opposite gouges. See how that works? Of course you probably figure that out, but Those are pretty much in line. Or I can just go really random. And keep it totally random. But anyway. Now, uh, of course you do that all the way around. If you want to, you can put a little uh, cut in here to signify uh, at least an opening of the stocking. Same with the mitten. All right. Let's look at these guys. This is a, uh, a quilted pattern. I, I saw this as a as a painting, and uh, I liked it. So I I cut all these little sections out of here. Put the wood burner for stitches, but you can just do V cuts too. All right. Change the color up. This one has a a toe that's not cut. That was just burnt line. And this has a, a toe and a heel that was cut. See that? So let's uh, let's just put a toe on here. Huh? Pretty much the same. same. <coughs> Excuse me. I like to start with. Uh, the ends. Then I can just join them together. There you go. <coughs> Excuse me again. I got a cough going. There you go. So, very simple. Fun, simple little carvings. And the fun is, like I said, the fun is really in the painting. I did not oil these. I just uh, watered down the paint and started painting and then threw on the feed and wax finish. But well, let me show you how I hang them. When it comes to hanging these, you can do what you want, obviously, but uh, you could put two eye hooks 
if you don't see that. You could put an eye hook on each side and, and just put a, a wire like this, right? And even longer if you wish, right? But what I've been doing is uh, taking these little little tiny eye hooks. These are a little bit small. I would kind of wish I got bigger ones, but where is I? And just to get it started here, take my little uh, my little uh, Duresta ice pick. Obviously anything will work. And I like to just put them off on one side like that. Spin around. Okay. A little eye hook in there. And then I've got, uh, you can buy these anywhere, these little uh, hangers. And it's a once in a lifetime buy because I don't know if I got 500 of these things in one package, but... Just put that in your thing. There you go. And then it hangs a little bit, a little bit crooked, right? And that's it. Well, there you go. Fun, simple, easy carving little Christmas ornaments. The fun is really in the painting and all the ideas. And like I said, the more that I made, the more ideas that came to me, the more colors I wanted to use. Like, honestly, it's uh, it's easy, but easy can be a lot of fun. And uh, give it a try. Easy to give away, for sure. And uh, yeah, nothing like uh, spending a day on something and someone says, can I have that? But in this case, yeah, you can. <laughs> Anyway, uh, thanks to anyone who hit the uh, buy me a coffee slash tip jar. Always appreciate it. Never expect it. And uh, until the next one, uh, I'll see you then. Give them a try. Carve some little mittens. You know what? Carve some, take your cookie cutters. Carve some gingerbread. It's all the same idea. And uh, painting is the, is what makes them stand out. So, all right, guys. I will see you on the next video and hopefully I will get some wood cut before my house blows over. <laughs> see ya.